Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. Thank you, God. Thank you, Sister Cole. Amen. I like the new stuff, but I love the old stuff. Amen. Amen. We're about today. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 22. Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 22. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, beginning at verse 18, this is what the scripture says. As Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt down before him. My daughter has just died, he said. But can you bring her back to life again? If you just come and lay your hands upon her. As Jesus and the disciples were going to the official's home. A woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe. But she thought, if I could just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around and said to her daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. The title of today's word is Pressing for My Blessing. Pressing for My Blessing. I've learned in, in life that not much comes for free. And most things come at a high price. 53, nearly 53 years of life have taught me to always count the cost while in the process of making my decisions. Here in this scripture, in verses 18 through 19, the scripture says, as Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt down before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but, but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hand upon her. As Jesus and the disciples were going to the official's home, Jesus was responding to someone else's faith. There was a man that had gone through a rough situation and his daughter had died in verse 18. But this man had faith in God. He was a leader of the synagogue. He was a prominent person in the community. And as he had made his request to Jesus and shown Jesus that he had faith that Jesus, it looks like the situation is over. But if you come and touch her, I know you can bring her back to life. Had great faith in Jesus. And, and Jesus responded. It said that Jesus was headed back to this man's home with him. And you know what in life, sometimes we look at life and and we see to where people that appear to have some type of, of a place uh, or position that, that they, they appear to, to, to be first in line for the blessings. Seems like life just treats them right. Seems like life just looks out for them that they have a favorite place in life. And, and, and many times we, we sit back and we watch it and, 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 and sometimes we feel that we just have to, to wait until others are blessed. And here this man of position, he came to, to Jesus by faith and made a request of Jesus and, and Jesus was headed back and to, to this man's home responding to someone else's faith. There's someone in here right now. You've been seeing people all around you being blessed. You've been seeing people all around you being healed. You've been seeing people all around you being provided for. You, you see people all around you that are talking about the blessings of God, but you have some things that you are going through in your life right now, and it appears that Jesus is responding to the request of others, and some kind of way you're on hold. Have you ever called a, 
I, I, I recently I, I, I had a, um, I had, had an incident to where I I called and and I called the company. Uh, I think it was a it was an internet company. I called my internet company and I I, I saw where they were charging me charging me some extra money and I thought I figured I had all, all unlimited. I'd never been charged extra and, and for two months in a row they hit me with some extra charges. So I, I found another company that didn't charge extra. And so and so I switched to that company. I called that company up and and and, and they, they switched me over. I, I called my company up once I had everything set up. The company that I was currently with, I called them up to to, to, to try to get to them and 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 and, and, and I missed to hit the sales button first. When I hit the sales button, the person came on quickly to, to sell me, and I, oh, I messed up. And so I had to hit the start and go back, and then I hit the support for technical service. I mean, for um, for that I wanted the things that I wanted to cancel the service. And I mean, they had me on for a while waiting for so long. <laughs> now when they thought I wanted to buy, yeah, yeah. I had some albums. Well, let me help you. Yeah. But when they found out that I was going to another, see, they they send them press one, press two, press three. It's priority in that stuff. If it's gonna make them some money, they have, they have to answer real quick. And, but, but when they realized that I wanted to, to change my services, they had been online for a long time. They were testing my patience. But I'm real cheap, and so I just stayed online. That's, that's where multitasking come in. I put my earphone in and I sit there and do some other things while I'm waiting online. And, 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 and sometimes at night, I hate to, I hate to, to dash it, but I hate to hurt it. But, but sometimes I sit back, oh, I got us on hold. Oh, I know y'all don't like to hear that, but sometimes it's like, it seems like everybody else is getting theirs. It seems like God has us on hold. But can I tell you, patience pays off. Patience pays off. And, and Jesus was responding to someone else's faith. But, but then we saw in 19, it says that Jesus' disciples, as they were going to the officials' home, in the first part of verse 20, the scripture says, and a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years, came up behind And so now Jesus responding to, to someone else's faith. The, the issue seems more pressing. It seems more, it seems more urgent than, than, than the issue of this woman. This man, his daughter has died. And, and Jesus is headed to go and, and be a blessing to, to, to this man, to his household. Because he simply said, Jesus, if you just touch her, if you can just come and touch her, I, I know that I can have my baby back. I, I know that I can have my daughter back. But as Jesus was on the way there, there was another one with another issue, and her issue didn't seem to be as important to, to maybe me or to, to maybe you, but it was important to her because she had been dealing with it for 12 years. It says she's been hemorrhaging. She's been bleeding for 12 years. Can you imagine that? Bleeding for 12 years? How, how weak you may feel losing, losing blood for 12 years and can't fix the problems. Do doctors can't fix the problems. Nobody knows what's going on, but you've been going for 12 years. Imagine it's making her weak. Has there anybody ever been caught up in an issue for, for an extended period of time? You, you, were, you, were, uh, you, you found yourself unemployed and, and the first two weeks was fine and maybe even the first month uh, but after time extended and time went on, uh, it was like you were hemorrhaging. You were losing strength. You don't let this call and pressure coming on you. You're going through your situation. Might not be the worst situation in the world but it's worse than just the worst situation for you because you're in it right now and others are talking about how God is blessing them and, and how God is doing for them. They're, they're dreaming and they're claiming it now. But you're stuck in your mess and you're going through it. And this woman, she had been bleeding for 12 years. But the Bible said that she came up from behind him. He was not even in her path. He, he was not, he, he, she was not even in his sight. It says it that she had to come up from behind him. Jesus was headed to bless someone else. But the next character in the story was not the object or the tar target of his blessing, nor the destination of his current travel plans. I, I might not be on his itinerary right now, but I know how to get on his itinerary. I might be, not be the target of his blessing right now, but, but you know what? There's some things that I can do to be the target and the, and the object of his blessings. And this woman right here, she was, she was not the target of his next blessing, nor the destination of his current travel plan. And you don't have to be on the current agenda or travel plan. You simply need to be within crawling distance. 
God told me to tell somebody that today. You don't, you don't have to be on the agenda. You don't have to be on the itinerary. You don't have to be the object of the next blessing. But you need to be with the crawling distance of the next blessing. In verse 20, in verse 20, be the second part of 20, it says that it says, it says that when she it says she came up from behind him and she touched the hem of his robe. It says she touched the fringes of his robe. Now, I don't know about you, but this suffering and bleeding woman, uh, she didn't get caught up in the fact that Jesus was had passed her by uh, and her issue didn't appear to be on his agenda. She, she didn't go into a pity party uh, and say, woe is me. It, it seems that everyone else uh, is the target uh, of the blessing, is the object of his blessing, uh, and he's forgotten about me. She, she didn't get caught up in that. Uh, and can I tell you, pity parties will get you hung up uh, feeling bad and feeling sorry for yourself uh, will get you hung up. Uh, things might not have been fair. It might not have gone right. Uh, you might not have been uh, first in line. Uh, but can I tell you that we serve a God uh, that if we can do our part, uh, we can get his attention. Uh, and here in this picture, uh, this suffering and bleeding woman, uh, she didn't get caught up uh, in where she sat uh, as it relates to his itinerary. Uh, Jesus had passed her by uh, but her, and her issues didn't appear to be important. Uh, despite all of the Bible declares that she pressed her way from behind him and touched what she could. It might have been nice to be able to touch his hand. It might have not been nice to be able to touch his chest. It might have been nice to be able to touch some other part. But this wife, this woman didn't get caught up on what she could touch. She just knew that if I can just touch him. And some of you right now, we're trying to get in the front seat. We're trying to get at the head table. We're trying to get in a place of faith. What God is concerned. But can I tell you, if you can just press your way to the point of being able to touch him, you might find out that God might turn some things around in your life. It says you touch the fringes or the hem or the bottom of his robe. And so this woman, she had to be near the ground, down at the ground, to be able to touch the bottom of his robe. But that's okay. She touched what she could. She realized that if I could just touch him, I think he would modify his schedule to fit me in. And God is speaking to somebody today. God is saying, if you can just learn how to get in the presence of God, how to touch God, you wait on somebody to speak a word on your, over your life. And God says, I'm waiting on you to get in my presence. You sit in the midst of worship and you're distracted about this and distracted about that, saying, woe is me because of this or because of that. God says, if you can find out, even if you have to crawl your way into my presence, God says, if you can find a way to get into my presence, and if you can't touch my face, if you can't touch my chest, if you can't touch my hand, you might have to get on the ground and touch my hem. But the kind of faith God says that you'll show is that you are willing to do whatever to be in the presence of God. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. This woman didn't choose to get down on the ground. And this woman didn't choose to get down on the ground to crawl, to touch the hem of his robe. That wasn't her choice. She said, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to get down and make it look nice and make it look dramatic. She didn't choose to get down on the ground and touch his robe. But life had knocked her down to the ground. And there's some folk in here today. Life has knocked you down to the ground. Folk have not been fair. Life has not been fair. It's knocked you down to the ground. Some of you right now, your health is going bad. It's up one day and down the next day. It's knocked you down to the ground. There's some folk in here that were in marriages and folk walked out on you and left you all by yourself. Life knocked you down to the ground. There's some folk in here, you tried your best to raise your children in the way that you should raise them. But some kind of way, the streets got a hold of them and took them astray. And life knocked you down to the ground. There's some young children in here, you go to school with the best intentions to listen to the teacher and do well in the classroom. 
but you've been strengthened uh, and bullies knock you down uh, to the ground. Uh, this woman didn't choose to crawl uh, on the ground, uh, but life had knocked her down uh, on the ground. Uh, but right on the ground, uh, she didn't fold up in a fetal position uh, and give up. Uh, but when she noticed that Jesus uh, was coming by, uh, she did whatever she could. struck uh, by a plane uh, on 9-11. Uh, she had a meeting in the Pentagon uh, at 8.30 a.m. Uh, that was scheduled to be over uh, by 9.30 a.m. Uh, at 9.30, uh, her meeting was still not over. Uh, and she looked down at her watch uh, at 9.40. Uh, but before she could lift her head uh, up again, uh, all hell broke loose uh, at the Pentagon. Uh, somebody said, yeah, Somebody say yeah, the Pentagon was hit by a plane and she was buried underneath the debris. She lay there because she assumed that she was dead and wiped out. When she realized that she was not dead, she began to climb out from underneath the debris. She said that it was dark underneath the debris, but it was even darker when she climbed out. Her name was Marilyn, and she knew that there had to be a light that way that would show her out. So she began to crawl out. As she crawled, she bumped into people who were trying to escape also. She told them to get behind her. Your 